Good morning, everyone. It's a privilege to share with you this morning. Thank you for hooking me up and sorting me out. Are we online here? Do I have to? So I want to welcome the people online. To our sorry, we missed you earlier, but hopefully you will be with us for the the rest of this service together. And it's good to be together. It's cold. It was raining. It's George. It's holidays for some. The kids are on holiday. That always changes things a bit. But we're together, and 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 we're 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 soldiering on because we are now like mature soldiers going through a book of the Bible, which is quite profound. So if you're joining us for the first time this morning, we're actually looking at the book of Colossians. So there is a book in the New Testament written by the Apostle Paul to this church in Colossae, and so the church is the, the letter that was written to them is called the letter of to the Colossians, to the Colossian church. And I have the privilege of getting a little portion out of that scripture that I'm going to be sharing with you this morning. And I'm trusting that it will become real for you um, in the way that we present it. So I'm going to do a little bit of... The, the title of, of the message is The Mystery. So that's already gets everyone's attention. There's a mystery afoot. And I'm going to be a little bit of a magician because mystery and magicians go together. And I've got my magician moustache. So I'm working on my magician moustache. So it comes out. <laughs> so the magician in me will come out in the message that I share this morning. But a magician can't be a magician without his bag of tricks. So I have my bag of tricks. So I want to prove to you in the message that we're going to read, I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to share just some points around it, and then I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to prove to you that you're going to get it. Because in the beginning when I read it, you're going to think, oh, this is, the, oh, this is for like higher grade, or what, ad maths, one of those, those people. All right, so, so that's my, my job today, is to prove to you that you will get this message. So I'm going to use a hamburger, some stickers, and a cokey pen, and a hourglass, minute glass, hourglass. Thank you, Yusha, for you. <laughs> we, we were trying to find one yesterday. So I'm going to use one of these. A magician needs an hourglass, yeah? A moustache, hourglass, okay. So you're with me. All right, so don't worry about this. This will all become apparent later. I'll leave. This is glass. I'm not going to put it out yet. You know, yeah, I know I've done broken glass before, so let's not set ourselves up for failure. Okay, let's start with the scripture. Colossians 1. So we've, there's, there's a whole letter, and there's, I get, the, the, the passage we're looking at is, is half of chapter 1 and the beginning of chapter 2. So it's kind of, it just reads like this. Okay, but the, it starts with now I rejoice in what was suffered for you. But last week's message that Basson, Basson shared was about the, the supremacy of Christ, that Christ is everything and he is in everything and he is above everything and he is over everything and he is more than enough for, 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 for each one of us. But, and be, but because of that, now because of that, I rejoice in what was suffered for you and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been hidden, been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. Are you all still with me? This is the scripture that we are looking at. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end I labor, struggling with all this energy which so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how much I'm struggling for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's quite a mouthful, don't you think? 
And you think, oh, it's cold in here, and I maybe should have stayed at home, and that's quite a mouthful. But we're going to get into it. So who likes a hamburger? Everyone likes a hamburger. You can't not like a hamburger. And then the best part is when you go to those parties where they build your own burger. I think those are inspired because you can have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you get some weird, like, um, like bacon and um, um, banana on your burger bake. Some people like bacon and banana, and some people like avo, and some people like a lot of spicy stuff on their burgers. And some people like no lettuce, no, you know, no garnishing. The kids don't like any of that. So a burger, everyone likes a burger. And a big, juicy burger is so satisfying. I watched Jamie Oliver make one on TV the other night, and he's just, he just knows how to layer it. And his poor son had to bite this burger, but it's like so thick because it's just full of goodness. Okay, so we have a burger. And how is a burger presented? So, so let's, let's, the inside of the burger, how is it, it presented? Layered. Layered? On, thank you. It's, it's presented on two buns. And if you're fancy, you can toast them. And if they're fancy, they've got little um, sesame seeds on them. Okay, I'm getting everyone hungry. Are oh, you guys are right at the back there. Are you with me? I see, I can hear the stomachs rumbling there. So, th- so th- this patty is presented in two buns. Okay. So this morning, we're going to talk about the top bun of this hamburger. And it's called the, su- the supremacy of Christ, which is what we spoke about last week. So verse 25, can we go back to verse 25 of Colossians 1? I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. So Paul presents the word of God. Who is the word of God? It's Jesus. So Paul comes to present the Jesus in all its fullness. This Jesus not only died on the cross, not only is he the true son of God, not only is he the supreme one, but he is for you. All right, so there's this bun that, that's presented. Um, Paul says that to present this fullness of who Jesus is, that you may know the fullness of who Jesus is. Okay, then we've got a bottom bun, all right, underneath the, this hamburger. And it says in verse 28, I call it this the mission of Christ. So the bottom bun wants to present that we proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. So there's the supremacy of Christ, and there's the presenting everyone perfect in Christ. Presenting the fullness of Christ, presenting everyone f- perfect in Christ. But in the middle is the good bit. Okay, are you, are you still with me? I'm setting you up here a bit. Okay, so you, you'll get it as the, as the story goes. Okay. But what's the best part of, of any burger? The inside bit. So let's see, let's see. So we went to McDonald's this morning. So we had to have a hamburger. So now I've really got your attention. Okay. But the best thing about a hamburger is it comes wrapped. Okay. So this message that we're going to share this morning, there's a lot of goodness inside of this, but there's a mystery that's wrapped in this mystery, okay, because we don't know what's inside. You can smell it a bit, but it's a mystery, and there's nothing nicer than a mystery to unravel, especially if you're really hungry to know what's inside, okay. So a mystery is something that is difficult or impossible to understand or to explain, All right, so the mystery, we we read about that in verse, there we go, thank you. The mystery that's been hidden. So there's this mystery that Paul speaks about. So a mystery is something that is difficult or impossible to understand or to explain. A biblical mystery is not a murder mystery. Agatha Christie's murder on the Orient Express. It's not Miss Scarlet in the dining room with the candlestick. Because it's always misguided, if, in case you haven't played it in, in, in enough times. It's okay, no one dies with these mysteries. It actually means a truth which God has kept hidden throughout the Old Testament, 
but has now revealed. Okay, so Paul has got this intense, passionate excitement because there's this mystery that is being revealed in God at this time to the church. And it's, it, it's like burning up inside of him because he's so, he can't contain himself. That's why he says, to this end I labor and I struggle because I, I can't contain this excitement of sharing this mystery with you. That in Paul's view was God's secret plan, hid from the ages and the generations, and now revealed to his apostles and prophets. And the text says that God willed it that this mystery should be made known among the Gentiles. So there's already, wow, this is profound. Jesus died wasn't just for the, the, the um, Jews. Jesus died for the Gentiles. So that's already profound. That's already like blown their theory out of you know, anything that they could ever have imagined. But um, that this mystery should, not, should be made, now made known among the Gentiles, not as bare fact, but as a very radiant and marvelous thing, a thing to sing about, a cause for which a man might very gladly live and die, as Paul did. This thing that, that, that is for everyone, that is contained in Christ. And now we get to the good bit, the mystery revealed. Okay. So have you ever been to a, um, like a beautiful place and it's early morning and you're up and it's all misty like on the, on the grass and it's, quite, it's actually the nicest seriousness in the mist. But as the sun comes up, you just get a glimpse of the sun and slowly, and that's the part I'm going to speak about now, it's that the inside bit of this mystery, this brightness that comes out, out of the mystery. Okay, so who knows, what's, what makes a good patty inside a burger? It's the, the, the whole burger is actually all about the patty. Am I right? So we've got the wrapping, which is the mystery. We've got two profound um, truths that Jesus is everything for us, and we want to present everyone full in God. But inside we have this patty, this juicy bit, and it's five ingredients in this juicy patty. What five ingredients do you think there are? In the yeah, there's probably meat and a bit of cardboard and and a bit of a bit of something else. And there's a bit of cheese as well, MSG. But in our context, our patty this morning, there's five ingredients. Christ in you, hope, glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is our patty. That is this whole scripture that we've read about this morning is kind of just squashed together. In the middle is this beautiful, profound truth, the mystery Revealed is that Jesus isn't only here for the Gentiles, but Jesus in you is the hope of glory. That's profound. And that's what Paul was so excited about. So Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we're going to look at those five aspects of that. Christ, John 1 verse 1 to 5. Jesus. We sang about Jesus this morning so beautifully. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That's Jesus, Christ. The, 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 as the sun rises, the first thing we see is Christ, Jesus. Jesus is enough for, you, for us. Let's just close our eyes there in this moment. The, the fact that Jesus, that Christ, is enough for for me, that Christ did everything, everything for me to be saved. He, he endured the cross. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He said, it is finished. He is more than enough for me. He is the all-sufficient one. He is the lover of my soul. He is the champion of my heart. He is the rider on the white horse. He is faithful and true. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the only way, the only truth, and the only life worth living. Christ is enough for me. 
can open your eyes again. So Christ. So we've already, Paul made this big song and dance and, the, and this eloquent thing of the supremacy of Christ because Christ is everything. But then the profound mystery is that Christ died on the cross and Christ is the true Son of God. But Christ wants to live in me, in. That's profound, in. Like in those days, they knew that there was Jesus, and then they knew he died on the cross, and then they kind of realized, okay, he's the son of man. He was the son of man. And now there's this mystery that he actually wants to live in us. So in, looking at the word in, when grace happens, Christ enters. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not Christ for me, not Christ with me, not Christ in front of me, but Christ in me. That's profound. That's a mystery. Why would God even want you know, that? Why would he want to reveal that mystery? Christ in me, um, the hope of glory. Um, but you know, not only does God pursue us with his love, but he also lives in us and through us by his son Jesus. That's profound. So at the time, the church in, Col in Colossa, there was a lot of Gnosticism. That's a big fancy word. Like people, so, so, so they had this belief that humans contain a piece of God within, within themselves. So they were like really off on their thinking, thinking that they had this piece of God in themselves. And so they were, had like a superior knowledge. And that was Gnosticism at the time. And that's what Paul was addressing this church. And that's why he's saying, but Jesus in you is the hope of glory. It's not this piece of God that you think you, it makes you really fancy and mysterious. The mystery is that Jesus in you is what it's actually about. No other religion or philosophy makes such a claim. No other movement implies the living presence of its founder in his followers. Muhammad does not indwell Muslims. Buddha does not inhabit Buddhists. Influence, yes. Instruct, yes. But to occupy and live in your heart, no. It's only Jesus. That's profound. And then you. So we've got Christ. We've seen the sun coming up over the horizon. There's Christ. And then it gets a bit brighter and it's in. And now it gets a little bit brighter and it's in you. So who's you? You, everyone of us, Christ in you. It's totally personal. That's what I love about it. It's not like for those people and they've paid their rent and they've got DSTV and whatever, whatever, whatever. It's totally personal. God is totally, in his supremacy of Jesus, totally personal to each one of us. And God knew you before you were born. And God said he will never leave you or forsake you. So Christ in you. And the Christ in Kevin is going to be different to Christ in Tanya, and it will be different to Christ in me. That's what's also beautiful, because Jesus in me is different. And if the world needs Jesus in, in each one of us. Okay, we're going to get to that as, as, as we end this time just now. So we've got Christ, the sun coming up, Christ, getting bright to in, getting bright to you. The hope, so hope, Amanda mentioned hope this morning. Hope is the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that events will turn out for the best. It's a hope. Hope is to look forward to with desire and reasonable confidence. That's also beautiful. There's a desire, but there's a confidence in this thing. Hope is to believe, desire, or trust, and hope is to feel that something desired may happen. So there's this hope in us, there's this trust, there's this knowing, there's this confidence that Christ in me is the hope of glory. And then the last word, glory, as the sun comes up over the mountains in all its glory, glory, um, there's a beautiful um, script, part of um, a passage in the book of Exodus that speaks about glory and Moses and we referred to Exodus a few times this morning. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I'm pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. 
And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy. It's not about that. Just go back to the previous slide. So, so Moses is saying, God, show me your glory. And God said, I will have all my goodness um, pass in front of you. That's, that's profound. God, show me your glory. It's like, okay, well, I'll have all my goodness pass in front of you. So the glory of God is the goodness of our God. Um, the glory of God is therefore his goodness made visible to us. The Father wants people to know his goodness. He is a good Father. But glory is also a taste of heaven, the hope of heaven. Okay, so now I'm going to sum it, summarize it all a bit. So we've got this burger, this mystery wrapped together. We've got these two, two extremes of this Jesus is all sufficient, but everyone needs to know about him. And in the middle, the secret is that Jesus in us is the hope of glory, in every single one of us. And that is the mystery. And that is what the hope of heaven is, to see Jesus in every single, single one of us. Um, Jesus becoming fully Jesus in each of our hearts. So I have my last prop, an hourglass. So this is me without Jesus, and this is where most of us start our lives. But Christ in me is the hope of glory. And this will probably take a minute, literally. Um, but sometimes, you know, like Christ in me, and then uh, I, I think I've, I can do this by myself. I'm gonna, I've got other plans. I can rather, you know, I've got, there's other things that I enjoy more that I spend time with. But Jesus in me is my hope of glory. Jesus fully in me is what each one of us needs. But we kind of have this kind of, it's me, and then it's you, and then it's me. And it's almost like there's that scripture that um, in, in Psalms where they speak about setting your heart in pilgrimage. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. They will pass through the valley. They will make a place of springs. They will go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. And it's that choice of, I want to go on a pilgrimage. Jesus, I want to make you the lover of my soul. I want to make you fully the champion of my heart. I want Christ in me to be my hope of glory. Okay, then that's for each one of us. So I've got my last stickers. So let's do some magic here, hopefully. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay, that doesn't look very eloquent. But it's fine. So Christ in me, the hope of glory. So that's the first part of the, of the, the bun, the supremacy of Christ, knowing that Jesus is everything to me and surrendering to that, saying, surrendering to Jesus, I want all of you in my life. I choose you above all. I surrender to that. You are Christ in me. I set my heart on pilgrimage. I want you to be everything in me. But the second part of the bun is I want to proclaim, present everyone perfect in Christ. So I'm on a mission to love and to support and encourage Christ in you, the hope of glory. So let me, so I go to my friend and I, and I, you know, person, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And only Christ, Christ in you, if Christ in you shines, that's what the world needs to see, Christ shining in you. And sometimes when you're leaking a little bit of Jesus, I come and I pray for you and I encourage you and I love you because I want Christ in you to become everything. And I do it to my wife. Where's my wife? I want to call her. She's not going to know this. But why don't you come here quick? <laughs> That's the beauty of, of, of doing this, doing it on your own, uh, preaching. You can get away with these things. Okay. 
And I'll, I'll tell you, yeah, she must eat the burger. So I'll tell you all about it when we get home. That's okay. But I, I need, these things are a bit fiddly. I'm a very so, so Christ in my wife is the hope of glory. There's Christ, Jesus in her. The world needs to see the Jesus in her. Because Jesus in her, the world is waiting for. It's the hope of glory. And my job as her husband is to love her and nurture her so that Jesus in her becomes more. Because that's what she needs. And the world needs Jesus in her. Okay. Yeah. What do you call the kids? All of them. Just the three girls. Yeah. Yeah. And quickly do them. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting the, the gist of it, hey? I've got three girls, you hope glory, Christ in you hope glory. So I have, I have three girls, and Christ in Olivia is the hope of glory, and Christ in Sophia is the hope of glory, and Christ in Bella is the hope of glory. Because the world needs to see Christ in Bella because that's, and that's who, what Jesus made her for. And it's my job as a dad is to raise them and to love them so that Jesus can become more and everything to them. Mm. It's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting it. So, so, so as much as we, the, the, the supremacy of Christ, and I, I um, um, want to surrender all to him so that Christ in me becomes everything. We all, I also want to present everyone perfect in Christ. And it's my role to do it for myself. It's my role to do it for my wife, for my kids, for my friends. Thank you. And then there's all the, the Laodiceans. Did you see that in, in that scripture? Laodicea, there's, there's always those ones, those Laodiceans. So it, it speaks in, that, in the passage I read, there's a place called Laodicea, but it's, it's in, the, in the book of Revelation, it, the, the Laodiceans are the what? Lukewarm. So the lukewarm people, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Ed, sorry, you're the Laodicean. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just love you because I know that Christ in you is, the, is your hope of glory. And I don't want to see you so wishy-washy and like backsliding and, and I'm encouraging you. You know, Christ is everything for you and you cannot live this life without him. And, and so I'll give you the hourglass so that you can, you know, kind of pursue what Christ has for you because he's got big plans for you. Okay, and that's how we present everyone perfect in Christ. And I've got one more, one more to do. So I love the... Paul says, that, and everyone I've never met. He speaks of everyone I've also never met. So I've, who have I never met here this morning? Oh, there's a chappy. I've never met you before. <laughs> this is what helps if you've got a no mic. Hi, I'm Sean. Uh, Joe, nice to meet you. You know what? Jesus is the best thing ever, and he's did everything for you. But you, Christ in you, the world needs to see. And Christ in you is the hope of glory. And so I'm giving you that. And I encourage you. Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> so that's the end of my message. But what I want to do is read the passage again. And then I want you to see it with fresh eyes because of the way I've hopefully tried to make it understandable for all of us. So this is Paul here rejoicing in what was suffered because he realizes that this suffering, there was this mystery that was coming that no one even knew about it. So he rejoices in what was suffered for you. And I fill up in my flesh what he's still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is his church, because I'll die for this thing. I've become a servant by the commission God gave me to present to you Jesus in all his fullness the mystery that's been kept hidden for ages and generations. No one knew about this. But now in God's perfect timing, it's being revealed to all the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known among even the Gentiles. 
I mean, this is crazy. The glorious riches of this mystery. And there's this mystery that is now revealed, which is, can you believe it? Christ living in you. And that's the hope of glory. That's what glory is all about. And he's even baffled as he's writing it. And he says, but I, I proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that I can present everyone perfect in Christ because it's for everyone. To this end I labor, struggling with all this energy which so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how much I'm struggling for you because I want you to get it. And for Ed in Laodicea. And for all the people who have never met me personally, for all those people you have never met, um, my purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart, that the same message will come into their hearts, that they will be united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of Christ, God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. That's beautiful. So it's an honor that we, it's, it's a profound honor that we get to share this gospel. So I want to actually pray for us. I want to ask you to stand, and there's just two things I want to pray. Um, and um, so the first one, I'm going to use my hourglass. So I want to pray for us. We can close our eyes, and it's not, a, it's not going to be a whole mysterious spiritual thing. It's just, this is really a thing of our hearts. So I really believe that in this season that we had a prophetic word yesterday, as Jesus is lifted up, he will draw all men to him. And, and the more we make much of Jesus, the more we lift him up, the more we exalt him, the more we purpose to pursue him, the more we fall in love with him, the more we encounter him, the more we, we celebrate him and worship him and choose to let him live in our hearts. Um, that is the hope of glory. And that is hope. That's what we need. We need hope. The only hope that we can give each other is Christ in us, the hope of glory. So for, for each of us to, to, in our hearts, almost determine, Jesus, I want all of you in my heart. And I want just half measures that I want it leaking out. I want to know what it is to have you totally the king of my heart, the lover of my soul, all the other things that, that distract us or that are so important or that Draw us away from you, Father, from, from you, Jesus. We ask for forgiveness for those things. Because we want to know you intimately as the champion of our hearts. And I want to pray for us that we will have this, this story. This is a perfect burger story to share this with others. The, the burger is Jesus died on the cross and he um, rose from the dead, and he is the best thing ever. But he actually wants to live inside of your heart. And that's such good news that you need to tell other people about it. And that's the burger story. And give that and, and, and wrap it in a, in a mystery, because it is a mystery. It's profound that God would do this. And share that with others. But we share this hope that in each other in every other single person Christ in them is the hope of glory Jesus died for every single one of them and glory heaven is waiting for Christ in every single person to be revealed so let's just respond in our own way whatever those two aspects are I believe both are or vital for, for all of us. Just the surrender to the total lordship and supremacy of Christ. And just the, the commissioning, the commissioning to tell the world that 